we can give the uh, uh, electronically, that app is called Give With Us. And uh, I wanted to specifically uh, say this to those who are watching us um, electronically, that we do have that opportunity for you to participate in this ministry by giving that away. Now, let me, let me state this uh, for a fact. Uh, God is taking care of all of our needs right here in the house, right? So it's not a matter of us having any needs outside of who we are because the Lord always provides for his work. Uh, but for those who are watching, I want to give you that opportunity to participate and primarily for uh, some, a couple other reasons, right? Um, and already my family, some of my family members heard about what we're doing in our community day next Sunday. They can't be here because they're out of state. But what they did is they pushed us money via Givelify to help with the community event, the buying of the, some backpacks. Uh, and I thought that that was wonderful, specifically my sister Karen um, sort of kicked that off and my sister Shelly joined in. And there may be some of my other family members that do that. But I, I wanted to say to anybody else watching, feel free um, to uh, shoot us something to Givelify. You can earmark that you know, for community day or for the next announcement I'm about to make. And those funds will go 100% to, to fund those things. Uh, so it's giving to other people is what we're really all about, right? We want to love God. We want to love each other. And we want to serve community. Amen. And so next week is about serving community. The other thing, Sister Black, if you advance this slide, the other thing is remembering our commitment to get a barrel together to send to the Guyana mission. Uh, this work, this Guyana Praise mission work, is headed by... Uh, Elder uh, Light. This is Guyana, South America. Uh, he's been pastoring down there for uh, close to 28 years. Yeah. He has several daycare centers as well as several churches. And, uh, and the Lord just laid it on my heart to get outside of our four walls, so to speak, out of our known, known area mm -hmm. and help somebody else out. Yeah. Right? And he's been laboring down there. He doesn't beg and plead for, for help. Uh, and the Lord just touched my heart and said, we need to support him. Mm. And so we've got a barrel um, that I, we're going to move out of that room because it's hidden. We're going to put it back out there in that hallway, out of the vestibule. Uh, and we want to fill that barrel up. Now, the things that they've asked for are baby wipes, children's um, uh, and infants' shoes, you know, sneakers and flats in particular. Rain boots is also something else that's helpful. Uh, Christian coloring books, crayons, coloring markers, pencils. Uh, these are things to support their daycare, mm -hmm. right? He didn't ask for money. Mm -hmm. He asked for things to support the work that he's doing in that community. And so I'm inviting, obviously, our congregation to be a part of that, but I'm also inviting anybody who's listening via live stream to participate in that. Again, if you use Givelify, earmark it what it's for, and we can fill that barrel up and shoot that down to them. And when we fill that one up, we'll do another one. And we'll just keep supporting uh, Elder Light in Jesus' name. How about that? Amen. All right. So I wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity for our friends uh, who, again, are listening uh, remotely to, to see that in Jesus' name. So we thank and praise God for you. At this time, we're going to go forward and get ourselves ready for the word of God. We know that the Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And so we thank and praise God for this opportunity to gather together to hear his word. I'm excited about the word that the Lord has given me. I pray that you're excited about it too, even though you don't know what it is yet. But we want to be excited about the fact that we want God to speak to us. Amen. Because when we come with an expectation, guess what? We receive something. Amen. But if we don't come with an expectation, more than likely you're not going to receive very much. Amen. Right? You're going to have what you come expecting. Amen. And uh, maybe somebody else is going to walk through this door. The Lord was talking to me about somebody else. And if that person walks through the door, I'll be like, okay, that person's really going to get their blessing because Amen. of what brought them to my mind uh, this morning. But again, we thank you, praise God, for you. We're going to take our text from two passages in the book of Luke. Um, Luke chapter 18, just one verse, and then Luke chapter 11. Our primary check, text, our core text, will be coming from Luke chapter 11. I only have one verse to share with you out of Luke chapter um, uh, 18. Uh, but uh, at this time, before I actually go there, let me uh, just bow our, my head and let us go in a brief word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, again, oh God, we thank you for your people who are gathered together in your house yet again to hear your precious word. Lord God, as we've already first stated, men cannot live by bread alone. It's not the natural things that go into our bodies that cause us to live. 
Lord God, it is you daily speaking life into our bodies. Oh God, and we thank you for this. We know your word is powerful. And so, Lord God, we've gathered together specifically to hear a word from you this morning. Lord, I want you to let this word find its mark in the hearts of every one of your believers, of everyone here, Lord God, that is seeking something from you. Lord God, I even ask that you would touch my heart, that I too will receive the message that you have for me. Now bless us, Lord God, lead us and guide us, strengthen us, and we will give you praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Okay, so from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, again, we're going to start with one verse out of Luke chapter 18, and then we're going to flip back to Luke chapter 11 and read several verses there, verses 1 through 13. All right, Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake, that's Jesus, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always pray and not faint. Men ought always pray and not faint. Faint. Now go back with me to Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, this is Jesus now, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend that shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he asks bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Wonderful passage of scripture that I like to use for thought today. Keep asking. Keep asking. Now my focus is I want to remind you to persistently ask, and here that means pray, to consistently ask for what you need. Amen. Knowing that Christ will supply your need in his time. Yes. I want you to persistently remember the need to continue to ask, knowing that God will answer your prayer, but in his time. Now, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Jesus makes it clear and um, ambiguous to us that we need to continually pray. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to continually be in a mode of connecting with God and seeking from God the things that we need. We are not self-reliant. Yeah. God has given all of us gifts and talents and abilities 
But those gifts, talents, and abilities in and of themselves are not sufficient to take us through the journey of life because those things only deal with natural abilities. They don't deal with the spiritual things that are the most important things in life. Amen. And that is really what we need to be seeking God for is help through life. And so he makes it clear, men are always pray and not faint. Mm -hmm. And prayer consists of several key components. There is praise and thanksgiving. Yeah. That's a part of our prayer. You don't just get down there and start asking for what you need. You need to pray and give God thanks and, and praise and magnify his name. And yeah. Talk about how good he is and extol him and exalt him to remind you yes. of who it is that you're actually addressing. Yeah. This is not a human being. This is the God of gods, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yeah. And so we should praise him and give him thanks for what he, he has done. We know we can adore God and worship God. That is getting into a mindset where we are yielding ourselves completely unto him and surrendering our will unto him as we worship God. And then we, our, our wills need to be broken. Our wills need to be brought down. That's the strongest part of who we are. And, and in adoration and worship, it allows you that access and that freedom mm -hmm. to let go so that God can indeed touch your heart and your mind. That's a part of, of prayer too. Um, but the part of prayer I really want to focus on today is the asking part, that is petitions. It is that part where we make known unto God what we need. Yeah. And all of us have needs. Amen. Who in here doesn't have a need? If you don't have a need, raise your hand. Because I want to come find out what you're doing. Right? We all have a need that uh, uh, we can't meet in and of ourselves, and only God can help us with that. So it's this part of prayer that I want to focus on. So at the beginning of our central text in Luke chapter 11, we find Jesus in the midst of prayer. Now here is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he's praying. Yeah. Why would the King of Kings and Lord of Lords need to pray? Because we have to remember Jesus was both human yes. and divine. In his humanity, he had to go through the same things that we go through. And the only way he was going to make it through those things was through prayer. Yeah. Prayer is vital for every child of God. It is our lifeline to who God is. Our lifeline to our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. If we forsake prayer, it's like for it's, it's like um, uh, suffocating yourself. It's like deciding that you're going to put a plastic bag around your head and, and tie a, a knot around the bag so you can't get any air. Prayer is the air to your soul. Right? So Jesus himself was praying mm -hmm. and his disciples caught him in prayer. And when he finished they said, Lord, teach us to pray. I believe they saw a connection that Jesus was enjoying while he was praying. And they were like, Lord, we want to pray like that. Yeah. Just as John's disciples taught them how to pray. Yeah. Lord, we want to pray like you're praying. Teach us how to pray. Yeah. And so the Lord gives them a model to, of how to pray. And I'm not going to uh, go through this model. I've shared this with you before. Uh, he gives them what we commonly call the Lord's Prayer. And in that Lord's Prayer, just keep in mind that that's a model. He said, say this. He wasn't saying verbatim, say this, uh, although you can. But the essence of what he was saying was not that. He was trying to show them the things that they should be focusing on when they pray. Yeah. And this is essentially uh, are extremely important when we get into this whole concept of what kind of prayers is the Lord really looking for. Uh -huh. And so he gives them this model to pray, and what we commonly refer to as the Lord's Prayer. But Jesus didn't stop there. After he gave them that model, if you look at verse number five, he began to give them an example of how that model actually applies. And this is why I'm saying to you that it wasn't just a matter of saying this prayer verbatim. Jesus wanted them to get through their heads what it is he was really trying to teach them about the importance of prayer, about the real power that is in prayer. It isn't what we say. It isn't how we lift ourselves up to God. 
God. But I will tell you today, it is in our consistency and in our persistency that prayer really has its power. And so he gives them an example of what this really means to uh, pray in this kind of fashion based on the prayer that he had shared with them or that model of prayer that he had shared with them. He gave them an example of what it looks like. And so he told them a story and they were a part of the story and you today are a part of the story that Jesus Christ gave. So he said to you and to me, which of us, if we uh, had a friend who came to us late at night, in this case at midnight, uh, a guest, uh, maybe a family member or somebody else we really admired and loved, and they came to us very late at night, they arrived at night, and they were hungry. You're going to want to feed your guests, but you're going to feel pretty bad if they want something to eat, and your cupboard is bare. Your refrigerator ain't got nothing in it. You got nothing to set before. For him, And so he says, you, you, you got this friend, he comes to you at midnight, he's hungry, you have nothing to share with him, and so you go to your friend, and let's call it in this case, your neighbor, mm -hmm. all right? And let's assume, I pray, everybody has neighbors that you're friendly with, yeah. right? And let's assume for right now, you're really close to at least somebody near you, right? And so he goes to his neighbor at midnight now. This is not at uh, 12 noon, this is at the, at the height of the evening, if you can call it that at midnight and begins to bang on the door of his friend asking for some food. Look, I got somebody coming to my house. I need to feed them. I have nothing. Give me some bread. Give me something that I can put in front of my friend. And he's banging on the door, knocking on the door at 12 midnight now, wanting to get in. Now, what should most sane people be doing at 12 o'clock midnight? Asleep in the bed. So here you are, right? your neighbor, your friend is asleep in his bed. And you are going to your neighbor at 12 o'clock at night banging on the door. Most of us wouldn't do that because we have some inhibitions that will cause us not to do that. And that's important to remember. Unless you have a need that you really think is important. If you have a need that you think is really important, then you're going to go out of your way. And let me just say this to you. Hospitality back in that time was big. You didn't just you know, uh, have people come up and say, well, you're going to have to wait till morning and then I'll, go, I'll get you some McDonald's or some Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. That's not the way it worked back then. Uh, hospitality was everything to them. So this was a huge need that uh, this person had. And so he's banging on the door. You're banging on the door asking for your neighbor to open up at 12 midnight. And they're thinking, you're crazy. You must be insane knocking on my door at 12 o'clock. But you have a need. And you start saying, look, I got a friend who came over and I need some some bread. I need to feed them. Well, your, your neighbor says, who oh, yeah, you cookie? Why are you knocking on my door at 12 o'clock? I'm in bed. And in this case, they didn't have central heat. So if it was cold, they got everybody in the same bed. Why? Because you get the body heat and then you put the cover over the top of you. Now you're nice and cozy. How many of us on a really cold night like to be nice and cozy and snuggled up in the bed, nice and toasty? And what's the thing we don't want to do when we get into that situation. We don't want to get up. We don't want to feel that cold. And so this was the situation with this neighbor. He was like, wait, I'm in bed. My family's in bed with me. We're warm when we snuggled up. I'm not going to come and give you anything to eat. But guess what? You keep knocking at the door. I need some bread. 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 Eventually what happens is that your neighbor says, oh, and they throw the covers off of them, they get up, they run downstairs, and they go to the cupboard, they pull some bread, some eggs, some milk out, they put it in their arms, they put it in the bag or whatever, they come to the door, and they slap it in your arms and say, yeah, there you go. And you're like, yeah. And you go back to your house and you do what you need to do. Hallelujah. That's the scenario that Jesus gives here. And what Jesus does is he makes it uh, plain that what really allows this guest, to, uh, this, this friend, to get what he needs to get from his guest is the fact that the person who had a need just kept asking. Yeah. The person who had a need didn't give up, yeah. even though uh, his friend didn't want to supply what it was that he actually 
need it. So let me let me deal with a misconception of, of our prayer before I take you where I really want to take you to. Right? And sometimes we have this thinking about prayer based on something that Jesus said in the sixth chapter of the book of Matthew. And I want you to uh, uh, turn with that uh, me, me to that passage if you, you wouldn't mind so you can see what it actually says. Now I'm actually going to quote it to you, but I want you to be able to see this is in writing because I know from uh, talking to even some of you that, that sometimes this is in your head and I want to clear up what it was that the Lord was really trying to say to us by virtue of this passage of scripture. So in Matthew chapter 6 verse number 7 Jesus says, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And what some people do is they go away saying, well, okay, well, the Lord's telling me not to keep asking for what I need. And they use that word vain repetitions. They associate that with keeping, uh, keep on asking or, or that I shouldn't keep doing that. That's not what Jesus Christ is trying to say here at all. I else he wouldn't say what he said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Uh, Men always pray and not faint, right? What he was really trying to get at is the way we pray, the, the, the condition or the heart situation around the way we're praying. What Jesus is really saying is don't come to him with a bunch of canned prayers. Don't come to him with a bunch of set prayers that you just say over and over and over again thinking that the more I say these set prayers, uh, the more, the longer I do it, that by doing that a long time, God's going to be pleased because it's going to show my devotion to God. That's not what God is looking for. He's not looking for your mechanical prayer. He's not looking for you to take the Our Father, uh, the Lord's Prayer, and just say that over and over and over again as if that's going to bring uh, some kind of favor to you, to God. And yet there are people who do that. On the same token, he's not saying don't pray at all. You don't ask me one time and stop. What he's really trying to get at is how you approach. So there are some people that, again, will take something like the Our Father's Prayer and they'll make a, a ritual out of that. And that's what they pray. When they get down on their knees, they say a couple of Our Fathers and they say, okay, well, I pray, right? I did what I need to do. Or if you're uh, some other form of religion, maybe they'll tell you you need to do 50 Our Fathers and, and 30 Hail Marys, right? And so the, the, the Hail Mary uh, mantra that's out there, some people do that over and over again. Some people use some beads, right, to pray with. And it's not just Catholics. There are some other religions where they use beads, and every bead they say a certain prayer. And they go through this ritual of following this pattern uh, to guide how they're Pray. Are there some people, they don't necessarily have a certain uh, prayer. They maybe get a word. It's called a mantra. And they just say the mantra over and over and over and over to try to get themselves into some kind of a subconscious, hallucinogenic type of state of mind so that they can reach some kind of connection with the cosmos. The Lord said, that's not what I'm looking for. Some uh, religions have a prayer book. They actually have a book that has a bunch of prayers in them. And people can get the prayer book and read the prayers out of the book. Now, there's nothing wrong with a prayer book if it gives you some insight as to something you might want to pray for, but that's not what God wants from you. What God wants from you is for you to pray to him out of your heart. Yeah. He wants you to pray to him based on whatever's in your heart, and, and, and he wants you to open up and allow what's really in you to be revealed. And so if you stay in that same sixth chapter of the book of Matthew, and we look at the next verses or the preceding verses, the Lord makes it very clear. And he says to the Pharisees, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. He's talking about the Pharisees as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. And this is the kind, again, that, that goes through these long prayers where people can see them and they think that by doing this that God's going to hear them. Let me just give you another small example. One time my wife and I and Michael, before he was old enough to realize where he was, uh, we were in Montreal and there's this church in Montreal that had these long, this, 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 this huge set of steps uh, heading up to the church and the church was all pretty much 
uh, uh, concrete. And what I saw there, I had never seen before. It was people actually on their knees, and they would go up stair by stair on their knees. And every time they went up a stair on their knees, they would stop and do a prayer. They did this all the way up the set of stairs. There had to be at least a good 100, 150 steps to get up to this church, right? Everybody could see them. I mean, you could, you didn't have to do that yourself, so you could walk past them. But they was doing this in the public, right? So it gave this sense of piety. It gave this sense of uh, uh, earnestness and seriousness. Look at what I'm doing. I'm on my knees uh, approaching the house of God saying this prayer. She said, that's not what I'm looking for. You're missing the point. That's not the kind of prayer I'm out after. Don't do this in public. What does he say in verse number six? But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father in secret. And thy father would see it in secret shall reward thee openly. What the Lord is really trying to get at is the things he wants out of you are sometimes things that you can only feel comfortable releasing when nobody else is around. Yeah. We all know stuff that's going on in our heart that may not be like God. Yeah. And sometimes we don't want to broadcast to everybody else what those things are. But it's exactly that kind of prayer that God is after. He wants you to get to the point where you will acknowledge and release what's really going on in your heart. Do you not know that the Bible says our hearts are wicked, desperately wicked and deceitful who can know them? Sometimes it's hard to know what's in your heart. But let me give you a little clue. How many of us have been talking to somebody about something that we were thinking about and the more we talked, the more we got revelation into what it was we were talking about. In other words, the more we talked, the more it started coming to us, this is what's really going on. This is what I'm really seeing. It was that act of letting what was in your heart and in your mind come out that actually gave you understanding. Do you not know in prayer the same thing happens? Sometimes you get in prayer. And you may be burdened down or troubled or have a need that you can't quite get a, a, a grips on. But in prayer, as you struggle with that, as you struggle to put in words what you're feeling, revelation begins to come. Because what you're doing is you're not letting that situation just sit in your heart and go unaddressed. Uh, uh, it's almost like taking a shovel into some hard ground and breaking up the ground. That is in your heart. That's what this prayer really does, especially when you continue to do this from your heart. When you really push uh, to give God a prayer that's not canned, a prayer that's not just based on some scripture you read and you read that scripture and you say, well, I prayed. No, God wants you to get to a point where what's really in you can come out. Because when that comes out, God can get the glory. And so the Lord is asking us to really steal away, get by ourselves sometimes, uh, and pray. Now that doesn't mean praying corporately as, as one body is not a good thing, because it's good to pray together. Yeah. And by the grace of God, we're going to do a little bit of that today. But praying together is a good thing. But sometimes you need to get by yourself so you can get some stuff out of you. And so this is what the Lord is really looking for when he talks about asking or seeking him. He wants it to come from your heart. He wants it to come from a deep desire. Just like this, 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 this guy uh, who had a guest had this deep desire uh, to feed his guest. And he did whatever it took uh, to feed his guest. In the scripture, if you go back to Luke chapter 11, where we were, you'll see that Jesus gives the key insight as to why that need was actually met. Jesus made it clear in verse number 8 that although these two people were friends, their friendship is not what created the meeting of the need. What created the meeting of the need was this thing he called importunity. He says because of his importunity, uh, he will rise. That is, the neighbor will rise uh, and give his friend as much as he needs. And so the question then is, what does it mean to importune? What is importunity? And that means to press or to urge with shameless, troublesome persistence. 
That means to push no matter what it takes with no shame, with no regret, with no uh, second thought, uh, even to the point where maybe you irritate on the person that you're pressing until you get what you need. It's a mindset that says no matter what, I'm actually going to get what I want to get. And I don't care how it inconveniences anybody else. I don't care of what kind of trouble it puts somebody else through. I won't apologize. I won't back up. I'm going to do this because I really, really need it. Look at what the Lord is saying to us. This is the one time God says if you're going to irk somebody, irk them. If you're going to get somebody's goat, get their goat. If you're going to get somebody agitated, go ahead and get them agitated when you start seeking for what you really need. Now, guess we know this conceptually that the neighbor that the, the man went to really represents God. So in other words, you can go to God in a manner that maybe seems like it could be irritating or annoying to God that you keep coming back to him asking for the same thing again and again and again. But it's exactly this attitude that the Lord says is what caused this friend to give to his friend what he needed. It was this mind Mindset, that I will not be denied. This mindset that I don't care who I inconvenience. I'm going to get exactly what it is that I need. It's this persistency that my faith and my confidence in God I'm going to use to get what I need. Some may say why is it that it takes this kind of work if you want to call it that. How come it can't just be easy and I ask God for what I want and boom it's there. Let me tell you and you can get to some point well that's exactly what God starts to do but you gotta discover something to get to that kind of relationship with God. You gotta go through something to get to that point with God. God wants to test you to test your faith and to strengthen your faith at the same time. This uh, act of asking, uh, this act of pressing uh, causes something in you uh, to be released uh, that becomes important uh, when it comes down to your faith. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, it tests mm, exactly uh, what it is uh, that you're looking for. Uh, because seldom uh, do the things that we're asking God for uh, happen right away. Uh, hallelujah. Many, many times. Uh, some time for that thing to happen. Well, why is that? That's because God's timing is not our timing. And what do we know about God's timing? His timing is perfect. Hallelujah. Our desires may not always be exactly in alignment at the time with where they need to be. But God is always on time. So what he wants to do, he wants to see how serious are you about what it is that you're asking for. Do you want this more than life itself? I don't know about any of you, but I know when I first came to the Lord and I began to hear how I was dead in my trespasses and in my sins and how I needed a change, I couldn't quite rest. Something in my heart said, I gotta get that right. I gotta be right with God. I became so Somewhat irritated and agitated with the fact that I knew that I was lost and that I needed to be changed and transformed. And it was that agitation and that irritation that produced in me a seriousness about what it was that I was doing. If I had gone to God and just said, Lord, save me, and quote unquote, I had been saved, like some people say they do, I never would have reached the depth of understanding of how I need to hunger and thirst after the righteousness of God. For the Bible says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. How many want to be filled up by the power of God? Then God's got to create 
and you will hunger. So sometimes you're asking God, but he doesn't do it right away because he wants to turn on something inside of you. That test creates a seriousness about uh, uh, your walk with God. Uh, oh my Lord. Uh, I hear James saying uh, anytime you ask something of God uh, you have to ask it in faith uh, with nothing wavering. Uh, that's why sometimes God holds off. Uh, he wants to see uh, are you steadfastly convicted um, that this is what you really want uh, or are you just uh, running your mouth as it were. Uh, but do you really, really want it? Uh, so James said, uh, look uh, when you come to God uh, you can't waver, because if you waver, you're like the waves of the sea, tossed to and fro. Let not that person think they're going to get anything from God when you waver. So this testing, this uh, God waiting, causes you to push beyond your comfort zone. Sometimes we're just too comfortable with the way our lives are. We're not hungry and thirsty for a change enough to wear. We get agitated, not agitated with other people, but agitated with ourselves. So it produces in us an indignation, a desire, a drive. This is what the Lord wants to bring out of you. Oh my God. Some of us, we live life very emotionless. I heard somebody say to me the other day, and they were talking about the way I was preaching. And they said, where do you get all that? energy from. I said, I don't know. I just know I'm excited about God and I know in my heart what it takes for us to be what God wants us to be. And I'm just giving you everything I got to help you see this kind of passion is what God wants out of you. And many of us live our lives in a very passionless way. We live our lives too passively. Oh God. But I gotta tell you, there's a lot of fight in this preacher. I'm not the kind of person whether I was behind a pulpit or not. I'm not the kind of person that lets the devil just slap on me and beat on me. And I'm not saying that because I'm somebody great. I'm saying that because God has shown me through this kind of process of praying with intensity that everything I need, he will supply. I just got to show him I really mean business. I got to get serious about what it is I'm looking for. I got to rouse the passion within me. I have to stir up the gift that is in me. In this case, it is the gift of the Holy Ghost. How often do you let your spirit be roused. Hallelujah. I think of a lion. Hallelujah. Who has a lot of land. Somebody said, when does a lion roar? He roars when there's something to roar about. Hallelujah. When does a child of God get passion and passionate about his God? When there's something to be passionate about. How many of us have a need that we want God to supply? How many of us have a desire? We've been praying about for a long time, and we see that it's just not quite happening at the speed we want it to happen. How many of us experience that? I experience that all the time. Yes, all the time. I experience some situations where, where I'm praying, and what I'm praying about doesn't immediately happen. Let me just give you a little bit of clue. I'm praying. Let the Lord fill this place up. Not for the sake of being full, because I believe God. That's why. Just because I believe God. But we've been at this now for about eight, nine months. I don't know. I'm not keeping top, uh, track, uh, but it's been a little while. And it's still not quite. Uh, well, I would love to see it. I thank God for where we are. Don't get me wrong. I thank God for where we are. I'm not uh, disappointed, upset, but I know what God has uh, more for us. So when I get in prayer, uh, come on, son, uh, when I get in prayer, I attack. 
attack. I go into attack mode with what it is that I'm seeking. I begin to go before God. And so I want you to fill the place up. And let your glory fill the house. So much so many people step through the door. They stagger underneath the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm praying with that kind of intensity. Because I believe God is going to do that. What about you? What is it that you desire? Are you praying with everything within you? God, bring that to pass. Lord, I'm weak, but thou art strong. Lord, I'm frail, but you're mighty. Lord, I have no power, but you have all power in heaven and in earth. And then you get happy about the God you serve. Mm. You don't sit there and have a pity party about how it's not going the way you wanted it to go. What you do, and you say, that's all right. Guess what? I'm just going to praise my God. I'm just going to magnify God. And I'm going to keep asking. I'm just going to keep asking and keep asking and keep asking. I don't care if God gets tired of me always asking him for this thing. Now, if God comes to you and says, stop asking for that, then you need to shut up. But I can guarantee you, most of us are not talking about that. Most times, what we're asking for, we let the devil yeah. come in and begin to speak to us. Right. And the devil says, God's not going to do that. God will never say that to you. God will bring you a word that lets you know what you're asking for is not wise. He's not going to say, I'm not going to do that. The devil wants you to doubt that God would do it. He wants you to doubt that God is even there. That's his stinky breath. Guess what? He's a liar. The Bible says he was a liar from the beginning. So he comes to you and lies to you and says God's not going to do it. When the Bible says all things in God are yay and amen. That means everything, every promise of God is for you. Every one of them now, not just a few, every one of them. God wants us to live on the high places. Hallelujah. Not that we don't have trouble, but I don't live in the valley. I go through the valley, but guess where I live? On the mountaintop. What's the mountaintop? I live on top of praise. I live on top of worship. I live on top of glory. I live on top of the impossibilities in God. That with God, all things are possible. That's where I live. That's where I abide. I don't let the devil tell me anything else. He can try to tell me, but I refuse to receive it. This is the testing that God wants to do with you. He wants to see how serious are you about on what he's able to do for you. But it's not just testing that God is looking for. This is what I love about God. God is powerful. God does a lot of two first. Two first. Two for one. Called two first. God can do two things at one time. He's very efficient. And I love efficiency. I'm a master, a student, I should say, of efficiency. God's a master, but I sit at his feet. Lord, how can I efficiently do what I need to do? Because you're very efficient. You don't waste time. You don't waste words. You don't waste energy. But when you speak, it gets done. So what's the twofer? One was your testing. God's testing you. He's building in you. Oh, a serious desire to want to change. Oh, but as God builds that into you, guess what else is coming into you? Strength and power and authority. How many of us play in a sport at some point in our lives? In that sport, you had something called training camp or training or practice. They didn't just drop you into the game and said play. Not if they were serious about what they wanted to do. They got you ready for the game. They had to build up your stamina. They had to build up your wind. They had to build up your capabilities. And so God 
God. Sometimes hold off on answering your prayer because he wants to build up your stamina. He wants to build up your endurance. He wants to build up your faith. He wants you to see that you can go through a period where he doesn't do what you want him to do and you still love him and you still praise him and you still magnify him and you still come to church and you still read your Bible and you still praise God not because everything you want is going your way but because you love God does I have anybody in here who just loves God Amen. the Lord is building up your strength they that wait on the Lord yes. shall renew their strength uh-huh. they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint yeah. when you just wait on the Lord when you continue to believe when you keep asking even though you haven't gotten what you want when you keep asking to the point of irritation uh-huh. sometimes you might get tired yeah. of asking but you keep asking nonetheless how many here have remembered seeking the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. How many of us came up out of the pool speaking with other tongues? I did not. It took me some time from my baptism till I received the Holy Ghost. For me, it was about three months. That was long. Way long for me. But that's how long it took. But in reality, when I made up my mind, when I got serious about receiving the Holy Ghost, it only took a day or so for the Holy Ghost to fill me. Because my mind had changed. Because I had fasted five days straight. No food. No water. Trying to prove that I had the Holy Ghost. When my soul knew the Holy Ghost wasn't abiding in me the way he wanted to. I had no joy. I had no desire. I had no press. I had no passion like you seem to have now. That came with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So when I kept praying and I didn't get it, but I kept praying and I didn't get it, but I kept praying and I didn't get it, and the devil would come to me and say, yeah, God's not there. Uh This is a fairy tale. Uh This is just a dream. Uh These people don't have the Holy Ghost. Uh They're just making that happen. Uh And they're just uh, uh, shaking and and, 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 and shucking and jiving. They're not really uh, filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't don't do that anymore. That's devil talk. Uh Uh Hallelujah. Uh When Jesus said, I'll be in you uh, like a well of living water uh, springing up uh, into everlasting life. Uh These signs of shall follow them that believe they shall speak with new tongues hallelujah and a host of other things follow your belief in Christ and so I kept pushing and pushing and pushing and eventually I got to the point where receiving the Holy Ghost was secondary to what I was really about. What I was about was praising God. I realized that's why I exist. The very reason I live is to give God's praise, to give God glory. And that's why you live. And that's why we all live. Because God said, let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. Are you breathing? Then you were made to praise God. So are you praising God? The way you can praise God with everything that's within you. That's where I got to. To where I began to praise God. That way. Because God wanted to strengthen my faith. He wanted me to get to the point to where I can receive what he says in 1 John that this is the confidence we have with God that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions of our heart oh God 
Stick with me just a little bit longer. I had prayed to be done by now. But the Lord is speaking to me for you. Some of you, in fact, all of you, I know a need that you have. I'm not talking about money or food or a job, nothing like that. I'm talking about in your soul. I know everybody in here has a deep soul need. And I have taken you and put you at the top of my list. All of y'all. I got one big top line. It has all your names on it. And every time I go in prayer, I mention your need. Because I know what it is. And I pray about the need. I get irritated with God about your need. Lord, here I come again. I'm coming with my brother on my mind. I know he needs his Lord. I know it looks like to him it's not happening. But I'm praying because I know whatsoever I ask you, it shall be done. I come with you on my mind saying, Lord, I know what my sister desires. I know what she really wants. I know all the stuff that gets in the way. But God, I believe you release in her all the joy of the Lord that will create the environment for you to receive what you need. I believe Everything God said uh -huh. is true. Uh -huh. And so, in my waiting, yes. I'm tested yes. and I'm strengthened. Yes. At the same time, I get more power. I get more uh, consistency. I get more persistency. Sometimes the longer it takes, the more maniacal, that's not the right term, but the more focused I get on what it is that I want. I had a dog. Her name was Sheba. I love Sheba. I used to play with Sheba. Sheba was a mix between a bull terrier and a Labrador. And she Sheba had some big, powerful jaws. And we used to get Sheba some toys. And I would take a toy. I would rattle in front of Sheba. Sheba would bite the toy. I would hold the other end of the toy. And I would just start moving with all my strength. I would pick Sheba off the ground. And Sheba just latched into that toy. What gonna let it go? Sheba wanted the toy more than I wanted the toy. She wasn't gonna let go. She wanted her blessing. Yeah. Are you going to be like Sheba? God got your blessing. He's got it. You fit into it, but you let go. Yeah. Don't let go. Yeah. Don't let go. Yeah. Keep asking. Yeah. Yeah. Keep holding on. Yes. Keep expecting yeah. that that thing is mine. That's the way you want to get tenacious. Yeah. Downright, I'm going to say it this way, mad nasty <laughs> about what it is that you want from God. You want to grab a hold of it and say, I'm not going to let anything keep me from receiving the Holy Ghost. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. Devil, I rebuke you. It's mine. You might try to snatch it, but I got my teeth on it. I believe it's I won't let go until I receive Hallelujah. what I need. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is where waiting produces that in you. See, if it was easy, you'd think everything in life was that way. But what the Lord teaches you in this church is how to survive. Life is hard. That's true. Life is has a lot of setbacks yeah. for Christians as well as non-Christians. Right. The difference is a child of God knows how to bite into the promises of God and will not let go. Mm. Mm. So Jesus said, because you persisted, yes. because no matter how foolish you may have looked to other people, you kept doing it. Yes. Some of my sisters, I know praising God and opening up, you may feel a little awkward. Mm -hmm. You may feel a little silly. But this is what this guy was doing. He could have felt silly yeah. going to his neighbor at 12 o'clock and knocking on the door. Yeah. 
I, I, can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. that he's going to be upset with me. He, right. he, you know, what's he, what's he going to think? What, what, what are they going to think if they see me out there at night yeah. knocking on this guy's door? What are people around? What are the neighbors going to think? Yeah. I'm out there knocking on this guy's door. What are they going to think? And we let what people think yeah. keep us from doing what we need to do. Now get shameless about your praise and say, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to receive him today. Because that's the essence of our passage. If we can seek God for a lot of stuff. Yeah. When the Bible says seek, first of all, ask. Yeah. It's going to be given. Yeah. Seek. You're going to find. Yeah. Knock. The door's going to be open unto you. Yeah. Right there, that's importuning. Mm -hmm. Jesus said it three times. Yeah. Three different ways. Yeah. Keep asking. Yeah. If you're asking, you don't see the result. Then start seeking. Mm. If you're seeking, you don't see the result. Result, start knocking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do whatever it takes. Yeah. To get God's attention. Wow. Not that God isn't already there. Oh Lord, I'm trying to. Oh, Let me tell you about another woman. Her daughter was sick. Mm -hmm. She came to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Said, Lord, she wasn't a Jew. Heal my daughter. And Lord said, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. This meat we're eating doesn't belong to dogs. Mm. She called the woman a dog. She called the woman Sheba. Mm. Yes, thank you. He called, not she called. Thank you. <laughs> See, it's good somebody's listening to me. Amen. He called, Jesus called the woman a dog. Mm. In essence. Mm -hmm. You know, even dogs. You know, dogs, you know, what I have is not meat for the dogs. Mm -hmm. It's not meat for Sheba. She says, that's right, Lord. Yeah. But even dogs uh -huh. eat crumbs yeah. that fall from the master's table. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I haven't seen so great faith in all Israel. Yeah. She didn't even let Jesus' supposed insult, insult uh -huh. and departure uh -huh. and, and, and resistance keep her yeah. from what she wanted. Jesus, I want what I want from you, and I want it now. Amen. He said, I haven't seen this kind of faith yes. in all of Israel. Yes. What am I saying to you? Get passionate about what you want and go after it and don't care about what anybody else says. Yes. The benefit right now of being small, you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of people talking about what you're doing. Uh -huh. Get in here on a Tuesday night. Get in here before church on a Sunday morning. Get in here before church on a Thursday. And cry out. Scream. If you have to scream. But call on the name of the Lord. And just don't do it here. Do it at home. Amen. Who cares what the neighbors think? Somebody might think I'm losing my mind. Yeah, I am losing my mind. Yeah. Exactly. I'm losing my mind, my mind for Jesus Christ. God wants you to be persistent yeah. in what it is oh, you're looking for. Amen. And when you get to that point, the things you desire, God has promised you. Here's the last truth God left these people. Yeah. Hear me now when I say this one. Because this is the capstone. This is the, the apex. Mm -hmm. This is the, the defining moment. Mm -hmm. Of the sermon, Jesus said, You're evil. Mm. If you're evil mm -hmm. and you're a parent, mm. but you know how to give something good to your kids, yeah. how many of us, when we have a child and they ask for a lollipop, we go out and get a rock and say, Suck on this? Mm. How many of us do that? Even if we don't want the child to eat the lollipop right now, something in us says, I'm going to give Johnny, Judy, Buffy, whoever it is, a lollipop. We're evil by nature, but we know how to do good things. That's yeah. true. That's right. Really bump your seatbelt, because I'm talking to one of you in particular right now. I applaud you, but some things you need to change. If your parent comes to you and says, I need money, Sometimes even though you don't want to give it, you still give it. It's not because you're foolish 
It's because you love. Yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with loving. Yeah. But you also don't want to people abuse you. So I'm just throwing that out there. But my point is, yeah. even though you're evil, you know how to do good. That's true. So the Lord says, if you are evil and you know how to do good, right. how much more so your Heavenly Father, yes. who is the very definition of good. Yes. Somebody came to just say, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, there's none good. No, none but one God yes. is the only yes. one who's good. Amen. So if we are evil, and we can find it in our hearts yes. to do good things for good people, yes. why would God be less? Latch a hole, be Sheba tonight, today, this afternoon, wherever, whenever. <laughs> be my dog that I love so much. I'll tell you about Sheba another time. I love Sheba. But be like Sheba. Bite into your promise. Bite into your request. Bite into it. And no matter how much situations change or try to change, you won't let it go. Yeah. If it need be, irritate God. Mm. This is his desire. Yeah. How many of us want to be filled with the Holy Ghost till we overflow? How many want to experience that today? Yeah. That I'm going to invite you to keep asking right now, right now. We're gonna go into prayer mode. What I want you to do is I want you to stand. And I just want you to trust me. I want you to trust, not me, trust Jesus Christ. 